Pokemon won us over with its adorable creature collecting teamed with fun gameplay and the trading card game is no different. If you already love the video games then moving to cardboard should be a simple step. Whether you enjoy evolving your Pokemon into powerful new forms, searching for shinies and rares, battling opponents or just creating a party of all your favourite Pokemon, the card game lets you do just that. This video is sponsored by Veil of the Eternal Night, bringing Castlevania-inspired vampire horror to D&D 5e. Kickstarting from the 30th of January, check the link in the description below for more. To get started, we recommend picking up one of the pre-built battle decks or the Battle Academy box, which will have all the decks, coins and counters you need, all ready to play. However, if you already have a collection of cards and want to start the game with your own deck, then we'll quickly get into what you need to do to build it. Each should be exactly 60 cards, consisting of Pokemon cards, energy cards, item cards and trainer cards. The ratio of what you need of each will depend on the deck you're building, but on average you probably want an even split for energy cards and Pokemon, and then item and trainer cards. So if you aim for 20 of each category, and then give or take a few depending on your build, that should be a good starting point. Other than the energy cards, you can't have more than four with the same name in your deck. So you can't have an entire Pikachu deck, as sad as that makes me. But diversity does make for a good team. Before we jump into the details, let's have a quick overview of what the Pokemon TCG is like. Just like the video games, on your turn you'll be playing Pokemon, ready for them to fight. However, to do so in the TCG you need to attach energy to them. Then you can pay for their unique abilities and bring down your opponent's team. Along the way you'll be evolving your basic Pokemon into their more powerful versions to make you even better in a fight. And once you knock out enough Pokemon to draw all six of your prize cards, you win! It's nice and simple, so once you get the hang of each step along the way, you can easily jump into a game. So, let's start from the very beginning of playing. To set up a match, you flip a coin to see which of you will be taking the first turn. Then, each person shuffles their deck and draws a hand of seven cards. After that, without looking at them, each player draws six cards and places them face down to the side of the board. These are your prize cards. Each time you defeat an opponent's Pokemon, you can add one of them to your hand. And if you claim all six of your prize cards before your opponent, you win the game. Once you've done that, both players can then put one basic Pokemon from their hand into the active Pokemon space in front of them, and then up to five more Pokemon on their bench, all basic. Altogether, this is the max amount of Pokemon you can have on the board at any one time. If you don't have any basic Pokemon in your starting hand though, you can reveal your cards, then redraw seven, shuffling the others into your deck. You can do this as many times as you need to until you have at least one basic Pokemon to play, but each time you do, the opponent gets to draw a card. So that's your board set up, let's get into a game! The player who won the coin toss goes first. At the start of each turn you draw a card. If you ever run out of cards and can't draw one, it means you've lost the game. This is another way someone can win or lose. Once you have a card in hand, the game goes to your second phase where the action starts. On your turn, you can do any of the following things. Play any number of basic Pokemon from your hand to the bench up to the max of five. Attach one energy card from your hand to either your active or benched Pokemon. Energy is how you activate your Pokemon's abilities, but you can only attach it once per turn though, so choose wisely where you place it. 
However, there are abilities in cards that alter this rule, so always follow what a card says. You can evolve a Pokemon by placing the card with the next stage of its evolution over the top, but this is something we'll get into more detail on later. You can also play any number of item cards. You can play any number of trainer cards too, unless they're a stadium or supporter card, which are limited to once each per turn. You can also call your active Pokemon back to the bench by paying its retreat cost listed at the bottom of the card, and then replace it with one of your other benched Pokemon. And finally, you can use any number of abilities listed on your Pokemon cards. These are different than their attacks and are clear from the ability label beside them. Now is the thing we're all here for, it's time to attack your opponent. The Pokemon can perform one of its listed attacks as long as it has the right amount and type of energy attached to it. The white pips with a star inside are colourless, meaning they can be energy of any kind, but the coloured pips must be energy of the right type, from grass to fire, electric and so on. Once you've used your attack, you don't need to discard the energy attached unless the ability tells you to. The damage you do from an attack is then assigned to the opponent's Pokemon, where you can keep track of it using counters or dice. Once you receive the same amount of damage as it has hit points, that Pokemon faints and is sent to your discard pile. The player with the Pokemon who fainted replaces it with one from their bench. If they can't do that, however, they lose the game. The player who successfully knocked out the opposing Pokemon gets to draw one of their prize cards and add it to their hand. If you draw your sixth and final prize card, you win the game. Something else to consider in a fight though are Pokemon's weaknesses. Just like the video games, grass types are weaker to fire types, fire is weaker to water. What this means is that when hit with an attack from that type, they will take double damage. Similarly, some Pokemon have resistance to certain types, which means they will take half their damage or reduce it by the number on the card. Luckily, you don't have to memorize what type matches up to what, as they're all printed on the cards. The type a Pokemon is is shown at the top right with a symbol, while the weaknesses and resistances are listed at the bottom of the card. Turns continue back and forth, playing cards, evolving Pokemon and battling each other until one person wins. It's pretty simple and feels very intuitive if you're familiar with the video games. Throughout the game, you'll be wanting to grow your Pokemon into more powerful forms by evolving them. Evolution happens in stages and you're not able to skip or jump ahead unless otherwise stated by a card in play. This means Pokemon must go from basic to stage one to stage two to stage three and so on. You can evolve as many Pokemon as you have cards for, but each of them can only be evolved once per turn. A Pokemon also can't be evolved the same turn that it's played. To evolve a Pokemon, just place the card of the next stage on top of the one already on the table. Special conditions like poisoned go, but any damage and energy stays put. Once a Pokemon is at the new stage of evolution, you can no longer use attacks and abilities of the previous stage. If you're not sure what to evolve, the ones on your bench are always a good idea as it means you can build up a selection of powerful Pokemon ready to jump into the active slot when needed. Just like the games, it's not just direct damage you'll be dealing, you can also inflict special conditions on other Pokemon. But what are they and what do they mean in the TCG? Asleep. If a Pokemon is asleep, it can't attack or retreat. To show this in a game, the sleepy card is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. To see if your Pokemon wakes up, you can flip a coin at the end of your turn. If it's heads, it wakes up, otherwise it stays slumbering. 
If you paralyze a player's Pokemon, it cannot attack or retreat on that person's turn, but the condition ends once the turn is over. The card is rotated 90 degrees clockwise to show the Pokemon's new state and returns to normal once the effect wears off. If you get on the wrong end of a fire Pokemon and end up burned, you take a token to show the effect. A Pokemon suffering from this takes two damage counters or loses 20 HP at the end of each turn. However, after taking the damage, a player can flip a coin. If it's head, the burnt Pokemon is cured. Otherwise, it takes the damage again the next round and another coin flip is attempted. This carries on until they are cured or knocked out. Ah, we're all familiar with the phrase, it heard itself in confusion from the games. You'll be pleased or sad to know confusion works in the same way in the TCG. Rotate the card 180 degrees to show the effect, then when you try to attack with a confused Pokemon, you flip a coin. On heads, the attack happens as normal, but on tails, the confused Pokemon loses 30 HP or takes three damage counters. A poisoned Pokemon will get one damage counter or lose 10 HP at the end of each turn. If coin flips aren't quite going your way, you can always cure any special condition by evolving a Pokemon or retreating it to your bench. So we've touched on it a few times throughout this, but let's get into all of the ways you can win the game. The most common path to victory is to knock out six of your opponent's Pokemon and claim all of your prize cards. You'll be picking these up and adding them to your hand each time you make a rival Pokemon faint. And as you draw the very last one, that's game over and a win for you. Another way to win is if you defeat an opponent's Pokemon and they don't have anything to replace it with on their bench. So when you're playing, always make sure you have some basic Pokemon waiting on the bench ready to fight. Finally, you can also win if an opponent runs out of cards in their deck and can't draw a card at the start of their turn. That's what's known as decking your opponent. If you want to try out the Pokemon TC before you start investing in stacks of packs, you can also play the game digitally for free with the Pokemon TCG Live app. Download it on your phone and play against other people online, AI opponents or friends. There's a tutorial mode which makes it a good way to learn how to play, plus there's a deck builder that helps you start crafting your first custom deck. So that's how you play the Pokemon TCG. Comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. And if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to Dice Breaker for more fantastic tabletop content like this. Or head to our website, dicebreaker.com, for an article version of this very guide, along with daily news and updates on the world of tabletop. Thank you for watching, have fun playing Pokemon, and I hope you have a lovely day.